Hey fragrance friends and enthusiasts, welcome back. Benjamin here at the Centaur Fragrance Channel, ready to show you a beautiful fragrance. And this one is called Shepra du Nord from the house of Bortnikoff. And uh, we're gonna talk about this one. I got a smile on my face for a reason. Again, if you like this channel, if you like what's going on, you know how to support me down below. But this fragrance is beautiful, guys. This is a niche fragrance dream. This is a beautiful Shepra fragrance. If you don't know what a Shepra is, it's in the name, uh, but I gotta tell you what a Shepra style fragrance is. It essentially means that it has to have uh, aldehydic notes and it also has to have, you know, or it can have citrus depending on how it is. And it also has to have essentially animalics. A lot of uh, Shepras tend to have uh, patchouli and a malic notes uh, and some florals to them and that's really what gives uh, Shepra's a lot of character to them. It's not the same as a fougere. Fougere essentially just means fern-like. You can get that from oak moss or lots of geranium and of course fougeres tend to usually have a lot of citruses off the top as well and spices. Uh, but here this is a beautiful fragrance. This is Shepra du Nord. Um, let's talk about the notes. You get bergamot, you get nutmeg, you get a beautiful fruity peach and um, I actually have some sprayed on my arm right here it's sensual it's tantalizing and trust me I've, I've smelled lots of fragrances that are shepras and a lot of them come off as too animalic right off the top or they come off as too aggressive this one does not have that aggressiveness to it actually it smells more modern we'll talk about the dry down here in a second but again there's nutmeg then you start no noticing some of these beautiful more creamy facets to this fragrance you notice the tonka it's got natural musk, but it's not an overly animalic musk, but it is here and it's full bodied and it's a beautiful musk. And again, you get some of these more sensual, smooth kind of nuances. And uh, this is a this is a birch tar fragrance. And it's not overtly it's not a scary, overtly heavy, aggressive barbecue uh, smelling birch tar, but it is here. It's a uh, it's noticeable and it comes to play. And actually, when I first sprayed this fragrance and experienced it, I said. This is a birch tar one. This is a good birch tar, and uh, it impressed me. It blew me away. It actually impressed me. And uh, overall, this is a great, great fragrance. Um, for people who like really complex niche fragrances, I feel like this might not be as unique or unique enough. This fragrance, I think, does try to do a nice blend of a vintage style uh, with, I think, modern sensibilities. This one is a little bit more sweet. It's a little bit more smooth. There is some tonka mixed into this fragrance as well, giving it this these vanillic and creamy type qualities to this fragrance. Uh, again, the musk here is not overly animated. Malik, it, and so it doesn't really have deer tongue uh, like some uh, vintage style fra uh, sheepers do have as a, as a note that gets gives it that you know note and that scares a lot of people away uh, and also for ethical reasons a lot of people really don't want to see deer tongue in their sheeper fragrance or any fragrance uh, so I think that Bortnikov uh, did a great blend on what a Sheeper fragrance can be, also making it smokier without having it overbearingly smoky. And uh, I think it's a great balance of things. Um, it Honestly, it uh, doesn't have a lot of similarities to it, but it reminds me slightly of A Lover's Tale because of that peach and these smoky nuances and these Sheeper new like nuances. Uh, you know, it reminds me slightly of Lover's Tale by Fr from Francesca Bianchi. Um, honestly, uh, Francesca Bianchi's Lover's Tale is probably a little bit more complex. Might be what you might want if you're a lot uh, deeper into the hobby, a little bit more of a connoisseur. Uh, but this fragrance is not, I, don't, I think this is, might be a little bit more wearable, perhaps for the average person. Uh, even though it is perhaps a little bit smokier. It's, it's interesting. Um, even though fragrances are truly uh, unisex, and uh, both fragrances are unisex, this one and the Lover's Tale, doing a quick comparison, I would say that that this one maybe leans a little bit more uh, slightly masculine but again very unisex and again lover's tale very unisex as well but perhaps slightly feminine um, so I think that is an interesting thing. I also love that it's called Shepra du Nord, which I should have mentioned at the beginning of the video. Uh, and again, being called Nord, uh, again, giving a little bit of homage to the, the, to the Viking Celtic heritage, uh, you know, with them, uh, you know, being uh, associated with fire and uh, burning. And uh, of course, uh, you know, putting uh, black ashes or ashes on their face. Uh, so uh, that's, you know, something that you sometimes see in fragrances, uh, you know, Nord associated with fire and smoke uh, and that kind of, kind of thing. So I think this is a great creation. Um, I think it's very well done. Uh, but again, let's jump into the performance. This has some pros and cons. Uh, so again, I already mentioned that this is not so going to be, I don't think it's going to be entertained 
the really deep connoisseurs as much. I think that this fragrance is going to be uh, a little bit more for people who want a, a complex, uh, something that gets you know deeper into the side of niche, but it's not so aggressive and it's not so overbearing and it's not so weird or or bold or unwearable. I think that this has a good balance of wearability, and also it, it that kind of gets into the performance. You know, this is a to me an eight-hour fragrance. A lot of Bortnikovs, uh, some of them are you know Vetiver Nocturne and Sir Winston, and some of these are very uber concentrated, extremely strong fragrances. They're very long-lasting. This one, uh, in my experience, is really only about eight hours, and it's not bad. That's not a bad thing. Eight hours is plenty enough for any occasion, an event, going to meet people, going to you know have fun, uh, going to a fancy or uh, uh, event or you know a dinner. Uh, the opera, whatever it might be for somebody who wears such an expensive, uh, you know, honestly, almost like a high class fragrance. I think that the eight hours is more than enough and it makes it so it's not overbearing. It's a little bit more sensible. And because it is, again, a little bit more on that unique side, not overtly so. It also with this uh, more respectable or more approachable uh, projection and sillage, it also makes it a little bit more of a, I, I don't know, a fragrance that is more, I guess, versatile or a fragrance that is not going to, you know, choke people out. Um, it's, uh, I like that about this fragrance. This, uh, so getting to the compliment factor, this wasn't a huge compliment getter. But um, it, it's, you know, even though I thought I would get no compliments, I'm not going to say it's a big compliment getter. It's not. It's simply not. And it's honestly, I wish that the sweetness lasted longer. Um, it kind of dries down and you mostly get this, uh, you know, the Nargamotha leatheries and you get some of those smoky vibes and you get traces and hints of the rest of the fragrance. I really wish that uh, the fruity nuances and some of the more playful nuances lasted longer with the fragrance. If it, if it did, if the peach lasted longer, if uh, you know some of these more vanillic tones lasted longer, uh, maybe if you uh, made this fragrance with the Nords, maybe you mixed in a little bit of honey, uh, you know, or mead, or maybe some booziness with the mead. I think that this fragrance would have been much more mass appealing. Uh, but uh, this is it really didn't get noticed that much, and people who did smell it thought it was respectable. They thought it was refined, but it's not something that really wowed them or impressed them, and not something that they thought was overtly seductive. But I mean, it could be depending on the person and the situation. Uh, it's not a bad fragrance, but uh, not a big compliment getter. Uh, Price-wise, and getting into my final thoughts, you know that Bortnikovs are not cheap. The, most of them are in the two hundred dollar range or plus. Uh, some of them are three hundred dollars or so. Um, I think that this one is really nice. Again, if you are looking for your first Shepra, uh, there are more citrusy Shepras that are much more wearable. Uh, there are Shepras that are a lot, uh, you know, easier to love and easier to get into. And also, if you're also, I think if you're into Shepras, uh, you either want that light citrusy playful side, or I think you really want the the deep on the side of niche and uh, unique and complex and strange and rare and expensive. Uh, this one, I'm not really sure if this was the right approach from Bortnikov. I like it. I think it's. I think it feels a little bit of a of, of a niche and a little bit of a want in the fragrance world. But I don't know how many people actually want this. I don't know actually how many people will desire this fragrance and seek it out. I'd be interested to see if any other reviewers review this fragrance in, in YouTube and the fragrance world uh, in general. And I'd be I'm ex always excited to keep an eye open for anybody else's opinion and experience uh, with the fragrances, especially like this one. So I'll be looking forward to that. Um, this one here, I don't see many reviews or many, almost any talk about this one so far. And uh, maybe that's because it's not a huge compliment getter so far. Anyways, have a beautiful day, everybody. Wear what you love, rock what you got, stay safe, stay beautiful, and uh, smelling great, I know that you are, so hopefully I introduced you, possibly introduced you to a new love and a new fragrance, and uh, that's what I'm all about, so I'll see you in the next video, everybody. If you're always looking to learn about a new fragrance and find a new beautiful fragrance, pop on by Centaur Fragrance, and I'll have something new for you, and uh, I bet you never heard of this one until today. So I'll see you next time, everybody. If you liked and enjoyed the video, you know what to do down below. And I'll see you soon, everybody. Peace out and bye.